One jarred everybody. Today is Friday and we're gonna make something really yummy. So today I would like to share with you a little cookie my grandmother used to make. She called them pecan tarts, but sometimes we use pecans, sometimes we use walnuts. You can use pretty much any nut in here you like. Just simple little cookie, but it's a little tart that's filled. It's so good. So we are making my grandmother's pecan tarts. Um, the, it's similar to, probably is uh, the same, but these are our take on it. Um, the pecan, I think they call them tassies. I never, to me it's a weird sounding name, so I never use that term. It's always our pecan tarts. But anyway, so we're gonna make our little crust and then we're gonna make our filling and put them together. So I'll show you. So we're gonna start out with two sticks of butter, which is 113 grams for each stick, so 226. Woo! There we go, I'm pretty good. We're gonna start out with two sticks of butter. And I like to use, of course, because you know I make everything more Italian, um, mascarpone cheese. Some people, will, you can use cream cheese if you don't have mascarpone. <clears throat> but we're putting in another eight ounces, which is equivalent to two sticks of butter. Okay, so I've got my mascarpone and my butter in here. Love my little teeny spatula. Paper chip. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna cream those together really just a little bit. My butter, I didn't take it out very early, but let me tell you, in this humidity, no matter what you've got going on, it permeates everything, cool. It makes everything melt fast. Okay, so with that, we're gonna put in two cups of flour. And today it's just regular all-purpose flour. One. Two. So we're gonna just do this on slow. Because I don't want it flying everywhere. And two. Good morning, sunshine. muggy today. You know, because of that, I'm just going to put an extra teaspoon of flour in here just because it just seems really moist. It's always a very wet dough. So you're just going to push it in, just make a little ball and put it in the... But you always have to take into account what the weather's doing. So... Take this out. Let's see if I can get my big spatula. <clears throat> Just get this off of here. Now this dough has no sugar in it. So as much as you might be tempted, if you don't like things with no sugar, but it's nice and buttery and mascarpone, this is all I need. Yes. We're just going to get all this dough off the sides of the bowl. Can't believe it's Friday. I spent all day yesterday thinking it was Wednesday. And then last night, somebody said something. I'm like, what? Wait, what's today? And they're like, Thursday. I'm like, whoops. Okay, this is going to go in here, and I've got this nice ball of a nice soft dough. It's not too sticky. I hear eggs sizzling. <laughs> and I'm just going to set this aside, and I'd like to do a little cover over it in a few minutes. Clean this off. So I don't get anything underneath my mess. And now we're going to make the filling. So the filling is pretty easy. 
easy. Let me get out my and chopper. I'm going to need this. So the filling, um, historically, my grandmother loved pecans, um, but we all often use walnuts. They're a great substitute, and I have lots of walnuts right now. I've got about three bags of them, some in the freezer, some in my jars, full city. So we are going to do walnuts today. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to start with, I have already melted four tablespoons, which I did just before can of melted butter. All right, so we have four tablespoons of melted butter. We're going to add into this. Now, it's already cooled off some, so it's okay for me to, to add this stuff, but I am going to grab my, well, Pat used my whisk this morning. Someone must always have extras. So, we are going to whisk in two eggs, some sugar, and we're going to put in Okay, oh, that was a close one. Probably shouldn't have done it that way, but that's okay. You know, I usually like to do this in a separate bowl. Oh, but it's all right. So we're going to whisk this together. We're going to add in one cup of sugar. Now, Usually it's a cup of brown sugar and half a cup of white sugar. I'm going to do just one whole cup. So let's see. Oh, that's a dirty one. Well, this is almost a cup, so we're going to use this. We're, now, I'm using the brown turbinado sugar, so it's not quite as melty as the regular brown sugar. What you making? The little pecan parts. Oh, yum. <laughs> I'm going to use my brown turbinado. So I'm going to use just under a cup. It would calling for a cup, and I'm using just under. You know, this humidity. So oh. this container is just under a cup. So we're going to go a little under a cup of the brown, and then it calls for a half a cup of white. This has the measure on here, and there we go, half a cup of white. Now, my white sugar, of course, is my not really fully white because it's my organic sugar, so it has a little tint of tan to it, but it's still good. All right, now, just a little drop of vanilla, so one cap full, which is about a half teaspoon. Now this is really nice vanilla. It's a bourbon vanilla, so it's quite strong. But my, you know, my full recipe I think calls for a teaspoon. That was probably a little less than a teaspoon. All right, I'm gonna put this aside for one second because we have to do the all important chopping of the nuts, which I love to do. So we're gonna put in two cups of nuts. So I guess I should probably measure approximately. Isn't this cool when I have my containers? I'm going to have a link for you if anybody, I finally found a way to um, share that it's hard to find this cutting board and a lot of people like it. Ta-da! I'm going to put this right in front here. I'm going to put, that's the first half cup. It really doesn't take much to chop these babies up. A couple pulses here. And it's not too bad. I'm not mad at anybody today. So no real aggressions to get out. Okay. 
So even though it seems like, you know, you got that sugar in there, there's a lot. This is mostly nuts. Which, of course, you know, is protein. So it always makes it a little bit of a healthier cookie. Or at least a less unhealthy cookie. Because, you know, there's cream, no, there's uh, mascarpone, which is like a cream cheese, not sweet, but yummy, and protein. There's nuts. Okay, and lots of butter and sugar, but you know, it's counteracted with all this good stuff. And here we go. Just gonna mix all this together. Oh yeah. This is why I like my flat whisk. Nothing gets stuck in it. Okay, so let's do it this way. My baby wouldn't, there we go. Just make sure it's all mixed together. And we have this gooey, nutty, yummy mess. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take some of this dough, and we are going to cut off a little piece of it. We're going to make little, little, little balls. Okay, about, you know, that big. And we're going to put them into our little... Shape. Now, you might have one of those little wooden presses, but I'm going to show you a way to shape it. You can shape it with your fingers. You can go in here and just shape it around and make a little well, and you have your little tart shell. Or you can, you know, some people have those little wooden stamps, which I do have, but I'm going to show you. I, I honestly like doing it best with my hands. But I'm going to show you something else you can use. You have a nice, clean fork, okay? You're going to dip it in some flour and you're just going to do the same thing. And then you have a nice, actually more perfect than my hand one. But make sure you dip it in the flour every time. And you have a little form. So everybody's got forks lying around. And if not, just save one. It takes up a lot less space than one of those wooden ones you pay money for and you can just use a fork. So there you go. A little tart shaper. So, I'm just going to do this very quickly. And what I always do is I just make my little ball first and then I go in and shape them all. Once you do this enough times, you can tell this one was a little smaller, so I add a little dough. You get used to making them all the same size. Now, when we're going to put this filling in, you only want to fill it halfway because they poof up. Hi, Mariana. Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My other daughter. Oh, so. Almost done. You guys working out downstairs? Yeah. Cool. And see, I think my thumb works perfectly here. And then I just go and shape them around. Because this dough is soft, it's easy to shape. Just push it up the sides. And you're all set. So now we're going to get a small spoon. Actually, I like to use my little demi toss spoons. It works the best. Put this out of here. And we're going to bring this over here. All right, so we're just going to take one little teeny two spoonful inside of each one. Not even, this is like a equivalent of like half a teaspoon. Because the filling poofs up and the little dough poofs up. And it's just a perfect little bite of sweetness and nuttiness. Now, if you have nut allergies, if somebody does, I would love it if somebody would try this 
with some other, maybe some other seeds. I'm telling you it'll come out tasting good too. I, I can tell you, I just know it will. Maybe sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds. Maybe, you know what? We should try that. I'm gonna try that one other time. I think we should check, test it out. I think pumpkin seeds would be good. And then we would have a nut-free version. And these don't take very, these like are eight to 10 minutes, I think, at 350. Let's see, that one looks a little light. Mm. And that's what we have, little filled tarts that we're gonna now bake. And that's that. So now we have um, another little recipe to add to your repertoire of cookies. These are a wonderful, cause they, you saw how quick and easy it is. The dough's really easy, it's three ingredients. The filling is really easy, little melted butter, eggs and nuts, you know, and a little sugar. I mean, it's a very simple recipe. People think, oh my gosh, you took time to make and fill all these things. You saw how quick and easy that is. I just love cooking. It's so much fun. And things don't need to be complicated and you don't need to think that they're complicated. You know, I asked a question on my, I have a back to the table Facebook page where I encourage, you know, we talk about cooking and obstacle, and, and I, I put a question on there, I think it was yesterday or the day before, what's your obstacle to getting to the table? I had a lot of interesting answers. I live alone, um, too much stuff on the table, um, but you know, somebody said, but nobody knows how to cook anymore. And I'm like, that's the whole point. See, people should not be afraid to cook. It's fun, it's easy, and it's rewarding, you know? So, let's talk. Hi. So let's see who's on here. Oh, awesome, Jim. I will post this recipe right away. In fact, I might even just take a picture of my grandmother's rest now. I'll write, I like to write them out. It's kind of fun. So if anybody has any questions or anything, you know, just put them up here about anything. You know, somebody's talking about they couldn't find their table. Well, this is a perfect time to um, get yourself simplifying your life and um, you know, to get rid of stuff. All right, Leo, stop talking to me. I keep reading that and then I can't focus. <laughs> I just want to give a couple of, you know, I wasn't always the best organizer. No, I shouldn't say that. I was always organized chaos. Um, I love having a clean, organized house, but with six kids running around crazy, coaching soccer, cooking dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, etc., etc. You know, it's a lot of stuff to do. So, um, you know, I started, you know, I think the bane of most people's existence in modern day is paper, or at least that's one of them. Um, so I'm gonna talk about getting rid of paper. We have recipes. We have pieces of paper with notes on them. You know, we have, uh, what's this? Another recipe. That's the story of my life, it's all recipes. But anyway, clear your if your table is a catch-all, throw it all in a box. Just throw it in a box. Don't worry about organizing and what's important on top. Throw it in the box. Tonight when you're sitting down after dinner and you're chilling out watching TV, put that box at your feet. Put the coffee table in front of you with some envelopes, some plastic baggies, um, and some file folders, whatever. And just go through the stuff in front. And a trash bag. And just go through it while you're watching TV. You're getting something done while you're too tired to do anything else at night but watch TV. You're watching something you're enjoying and you go through a piece of paper and you say, okay, this recipe, I want to keep it. It's going to go in my recipe folder or in my recipe book or box or whatever you have. So whatever your most is, if it's bills, take them out of the envelope and get rid of the envelope. Your pile becomes already half size. If you make sure you don't have duplicates, if you've got two of one, throw one away, you know, burn them, whatever you do with them. Um, but it's just a little tip of a way to start that um, process because it's not an easy process. Now, something else I'm going to, uh, I, I have referred people to this before, but if you have trouble organizing or just staying on top of a house schedule, I highly, highly, highly recommend um, this lady named Marla Silly. She is um, 
called The Fly Lady. Go to Fly Lady, I think it's flylady.com. Let me just double check. I think it's, yes, flylady.net. Um, she is just this really cool lady, you know, who just helps you get organized and you just follow her schedule the weekly schedule, the monthly schedule. This week is a focus on this part of the house, and this week is a focus on that part of the house. And she's got focus, different things to focus on. She calls it baby steps. Just jump in wherever you are. So I truly, truly recommend her. Look it up. Print out her little schedules and follow them, and it really, really helps. I've I've followed her stuff. I've kind of gone in waves over the years. I found her. Gosh, I don't know how many years ago, years ago, and I, I had the I I got myself a binder in the kitchen and I just did my I followed my steps and it helped me um, and and I've started doing it again because I you know loosely because I don't have as much as I used to but um, I still you know it's a great way to get organized in cleaning your house organizing getting rid of um, and just um, but she also gets into reminding you of good daily things like don't forget to drink your water and and all that kind of stuff so it's a really really um, a great resource whether you use it all the time or you jump back and forth at it once in a while or you just need a little grab a few tips from it, whatever it is. And she also has wonderful cleaning tools, great, you know, dusters and mops and but really good quality, um, really worth it. And they're fun. They're purple and my favorite color anyway. So, um, you know, that's um, that's pretty cool. So I highly recommend that. So I'm going to really quick. I see those little babies puffing up. Let me go check on the little tarts and I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Leo, entertain them. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my God, they smell so good. Almost ready. They are poofed up. The filling has filled the little tart. Little tart edges are poofed, but I want them to get just a hair golden. And I will, I will immediately right now, write up the recipe as I did it. And again, you know, I used mascarpone. You can, if you don't have mascarpone cheese, use, use cream cheese. Um, works just as well. I just have a big tub of mascarpone I want to use. Um, and I like using mascarpone because it's my favorite and I like to Italianize everything. Also, um, just because now I opened that means I'm going to have to use it. So um, in the coming week, we're going to make a few other things with mascarpone cheese. I actually have these um, little mascarpone cookie bars with raspberry that we're going to make one day next week. So yummy. Got the recipe out. <laughs> you know, when I first got married, I was recipe hunting because, you know, I had to have, I wanted more of a repertoire of, I had so much in my, my arsenal already, but I was just so excited to learn new recipes. So I used, I used to write everything on these little cards and, um, and it was, you know, I had this whole box of these little recipe cards. So, cause my grandmother had them on little cards and I liked that. So, oh, um, I'll come back to that. Um, so anyway, so we are gonna have, I have so, but, uh, so much of um, recipes and cards. Now I have them in little sleeves or in little recipe boxes as well as my personal book. Um, so I'll show you guys all my stuff at, at some point. Um, and right now i um want to you know i've done at times a recommendation of a book or a movie um this is a book um called the battle plan for prayer it's really awesome but what this is is it goes with a movie so the movie's called the war room look it up it's just i think it's a I think this, the war room is about having a, a place and time to pray. Um, it's a really good movie. And I think that in this, the, the, the current climate in the world and the, our country, we need it. We need to have a battle plan for prayer because sometimes there's nothing else you can do. And that's probably when you get to the point where you need to pray, um, because there's nothing else. That's when you, that's when you actually see how it works. People don't tend to pray on the daily. You know, when things are going fine, we don't, you know, we don't say thanks. We just say, yeah, everything's great. But then all of a sudden everything goes to crap and we're like, oh, please help me. You know what? We need to do it all the time. So, um, 
I recommend this, um, the, watch the movie The War Room and the accompanying book The Battle Plan for Prayer. It's just, um, it's just really, really good. And I really think that you'll enjoy it. It's a good, you know, um, there's these guys, the Kendrick brothers, and they made, they've made a bunch of movies. And I'm telling you, you know, they are, I found them because someone recommended one of the movies to me years ago. Gosh, it's got to be about 10 years ago. And when I found the one, then I watched some of their others. And they're, they're from, a, I think it's a Baptist church down in Georgia. I know it's a Christian or a Baptist church down in Georgia. And they've started this movie ministry. And their movies are Christian movies. They're not like shove it down your throat Christian. They're not like, you know, you're going to hell if you don't do it this way kind of movies. They're just about pure goodness and knowing that God's there. I really, really recommend them. War Room is one of their movies, and they and they've written they've written a couple of books to accompany a couple of their movies. Um, I previously recommended um, the movie called um, Fireproof, which is really, really about marriage or re any relationship really. But um, and there's a book that goes with that called The Love Dare, and really, really great book, really great movie. Um, and so is the war room. There's a couple other movies. I'll bring those up at different times because I don't like to give you everything at once, but I really recommend these. I think they're really good um, to get your mind working and, um, you know, setting you in a place where you're going to be a little bit more open to life and the world and love and all that kind of stuff, just in general. So um, check it out. So check out Fly Lady check out the war room and the battle plan and um i'm gonna go check on a cookie while you guys look those up really quick okie dokie guess what we've got goodies ta-da look at that huh don't those look beautiful so now i'm very gently gonna just all you do is just pop them out well they're hot Whoop. So they're still a little soft, kind of because they're hot. But I'm just going to show you. Here's one. Aren't they cute, though? Look at that. Mmm. Yum. But I'm going to let that cool off. I want to just devour it right now, but I can't because I will burn my tongue and then I won't be able to re enjoy the rest of them. But let's see if I can just get a couple of them out to cool. Whoopsie daisy. So you're gonna see, they're just lightly golden on the bottom. Ooh, and that's hot. Oh gosh, they're so yummy. So anyway, I think that um, I'm gonna have one in a few minutes when they cool off, and then I will save the rest for later. So I um, I told when I was at the uh, little uh, peaceful gathering we had here in Madison the other day, um, when was that day before yesterday I saw the police officers and then we were talking they're like what'd you make today and um so I actually kind of used up those cookies so I told because I told them I was going to bring them something so this makes quite a few I'm going to take a little tray full um over to them today so um now that I said it out loud I gotta make sure we do it <clears throat> so anyway um and in, when I was actually looking at my book to show you guys, my, um, my War Room book here, I found a little note card that I had written that it was, I don't know where and when and why I wrote it, but I remember having it on the wall next to my desk at one point, and somehow it ended up in this book. And I think that I'm going to keep this back up in the wall again because I think we're all this. <clears throat> it's a little, just a little saying. It says, you are the powerhouse of all the good the world needs today. I think we need to be the powerhouse for the good. So this was just, I, I have this thing about, actually, I think I'm going to put this on my, my, um, my cabinet. I have a, um, a thing where I used to always write these motivational quotes and sayings, and I'd put them on my kitchen, my kitchen pantry cabinet. And the kids were always used to, you know, kids and kids that came over, they'd stop and read the cabinet. In the meantime, as I switched them out, I'd take the one off the front of the cabinet and put a new one up, or a new couple of them or whatever, and I would put them on the inside of the cabinet. The inside of my cabinet is full from top to bottom of quotes and sayings like these. So this one's going to go up, I think. It's still already written up, 
I used to decorate them, cut them out in cardboard and construction paper and do all kind of funky stuff, magic marker, different colors, different quotes and saying, whether they were sports related or, or just kindness or loving or forgiveness or whatever the topic of the day was, that's what I uh, put on the wall. So anyway, okay. Well, I think we are going to cut it a little short today because I don't want to, oh yeah, see these are firm. See, so when I first took them out, the, the cookie part was a little soft because obviously it's hot. And it is, you know, all butter, mascarpone and flour. So it's really not a hard cookie part. But now they're firming up uh, because they're cooling off. You know, let me just see if they're good. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. That is so yummy. Mmm. Oh, the filling's hot. <laughs> A little piece of filling fell on my finger. Okay. That's my, um... My one test taste, you know, you gotta try it. You can't, you can't give it out if you haven't tasted it, you know? And they say chefs should always taste their food before um, before they hand it out, you know, make sure it's got enough salt, enough spice, enough whatever. Of course you gotta taste it. That's crazy. Oh, I'm not killing, you're gonna make some now because you've got the, I'm gonna give you the recipe. But you know what? I said the recipe too, you can always just watch me all over again. That was a quickie. But anyway, I will print it out for you or write it out for you. Um, so please, um, last week, before I sign off, I want to talk about this. Last week, I forget what day it was. I was five people away from having 600 subscribers on my YouTube channel. I was like, come on, man, I just want to get to, to 600. I was at 595. And so I put a thing on my personal Facebook page and on a little town page here. I said, please, everybody, I just want to, I want to get five more so I can go to sleep. Just get five more subscribers and hit 600. Do you know in this week, I'm so excited. People came through for me and now I have 672. So Let's see, 72 and five is 77. So I got 77 new subscribers this week, which is awesome. I am so close now to 700, and then I only have three left to go to hit 1,000. I really, really, guys, we're getting so close to, um, we're getting so close to getting out of quarantine. I really wanna hit 1,000 before we're out of full quarantine here, and I'm now the, now the pressure's on me, because I just wanna, I wanna be able to keep doing this for free. I don't want to have to go back to charging for cooking lessons. I want to just be able to do um, these these daily things and um, and make whether I record some or whether I continue doing all lives. I have no idea what the future holds at this point. I've already got it figured out that when I'm in Italy, I can do them at 5 p.m. over there because it'll still be 11 here. I've got every. I don't know when I'm going to Italy, so don't even worry about that. But um, I just want to be able to keep doing these now for free for people and as long as i get the followers or the subscribers then i can keep doing it for free because you know i'll get something from youtube instead of from people and i would rather do it that way so um i'm really excited i never ever thought march 13th when i started doing this that it would come to this i think i had i don't know 150 subscribers in march so this is really cool and it's hard getting youtube subscribers the Facebook likes is easy to get, but YouTube, for somebody to hit the subscribe button for some reason is um, harder to do. It's more of a commitment, I guess. So if you guys wouldn't mind, please share my YouTube channel. I'm, you know, these next couple weeks we're committed, especially when Leo gets home, we're committed to getting all my Facebook videos onto YouTube because I can categorize them. You'll be able to go look for desserts or look for you know, entrees or pasta dishes or gluten-free or whatever, and I'll have them all in categories. And so it's easier to do that, make playlists on YouTube. And so I want to be able to continue doing the Facebook Live, but I want to have all my videos on YouTube and be able to, um, that way you can watch them live if you get to, but they're so much easier to access um, on YouTube. So I want to be able to offer that to you guys. 
And if I can, like I said, make it all happen, people liking my Facebook page and, you know, hit, hit the little dingy bell so you get reminded um, to watch um, when we go live. And, um, and then on my YouTube channel, I'm just really, really anxious. So please tell your friends, call people up, send an email, send a message on Facebook. But please, um, if I can get some more um, subscribers on YouTube, I'll be forever indebted to you guys. And I promise to give it all back. So, I mean, it doesn't cost anything to, you know, subscribe. So, all right. It is Friday. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Oh, if anybody, um, I'm going to be setting up another Pampered Chef party. So I will put that on my Facebook page. Um, if anybody would like to have a virtual Pampered Chef party, I will do a little private cooking lesson for you guys through Zoom and do a little Pampered Chef demonstration on some of the products and take orders and you as the host or hostess will get some freebies so that's cool and also um when i do those we'll do it a cooking party because i will also show you my cool you know um daterra cucina pans and the stuff <clears throat> that i use so um if anybody wants to do that then i will be happy to so just send me a private message and we can set that up it doesn't matter where in the country you are and what's cool about this is it doesn't matter where in the country your friends are if you want to invite somebody who lives across country so pretty key pretty cool pretty neato all right you guys have a wonderful weekend i love you Mwah! i'll talk to you soon ciao